Dr. Ken Landau. Let's talk about Genuvia. Genuvia is a medicine for treatment of diabetes, type 2 diabetes, the old adult onset diabetes that tends to occur in somewhat older, somewhat heavier individuals. It's an extraordinarily popular drug, first approved in the United States in 2006, and then it was approved in combination with metformin in a pill called Janumet in 2007. As I say, it's for type 2 diabetes, not type 1 diabetes, not for people who have diabetic ketoacidosis. It comes as a once a day pill, although they're working on a pill once a week. It's oral medication, of course, and it's made by a big manufacturing company known as Merck. Now, we look at diabetes and drugs for diabetes on the basis of how much they can reduce your blood sugar. And actually, they all work about the same. They all reduce the glycosylated hemoglobin. That's a measure of how your sugar has done in the past three months. All of the drugs reduce it by about seven-tenths or eight-tenths of one percent, and that's indeed what Genuvia does. But by the time a year goes by, it only reduces it by about half of one percent. If we look at people who are fairly well controlled to begin with, their A1C is, let's say, eight, only 40 percent of the time are they going to be able to reduce it to less than seven. What does it do for the fasting blood sugar? Well, people who start off with, say, 170, 180 blood sugar, it's going to reduce it by about 13 points in the short term, but by a year, it only reduces it by about 8 points. It doesn't change your body weight, and it doesn't change your cholesterol. It doesn't seem to be associated with significant change in the metabolism of other drugs or side effects with other drugs, except if you use them to reduce the sugar, because the Genuvia and other anti-diabetic medicines may cause hypoglycemia. Now, what we worry about, the most important condition with this, is pancreatitis. Pancreatitis can be severe, can lead to death. You have a higher risk of developing pancreatitis if you've had a history of pancreatitis or gallstones, or you drink too much, or your triglycerides are too high, or you have a history of kidney problems. How do you know if you have pancreatitis? Well, you tend to have severe abdominal pain. It's boring from the front right to the back. It can radiate sometime, and it may be associated with vomiting. If you combine the Genuvia with other anti-diabetic drugs, you could get hypoglycemia and then have headache or drowsiness, weakness or confusion, irritability or dizziness or, or hunger or sweating. In some people, there's a problem with the kidney, and you may go on to develop some kidney damage or kidney failure. That's unusual. There was the fear initially of pancreatic or thyroid cancer. That seems to be mostly in animals. We know that if we look at the different kind of drugs, Victoza may well have the higher incidence of this. We always worry about macrovascular disease, that stroke and heart attack doesn't seem to be a problem, doesn't seem to be increased by taking Genuvia. And post-marketing studies, after the drug had been on the market for about nine years, it was found that it could be associated with severe disabling joint pain. That could be delayed either months or years after you start taking it, but fortunately the pain seems to go away after you stop taking it by about a month. This drug is in the family of the DPP-4 inhibitors. We call these drugs the dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors. What they do is they prevent a chemical known as DPP-4 from breaking down a hormone that the intestine makes. The hormone is known as incretin. And this incretin made by the intestine helps make the pancreas produce insulin. Well, that's obviously something that we want. But this chemical, DPP-4, causes the incretin to break down. So now we have an inhibitor of the chemical. So as a result of taking the Genuvia, this DPP-4 inhibitor, what it does is allows the incretin to be around the intestine, around the body longer, and that increases the production of insulin by the pancreas, increases the secretion of the insulin. And there's another chemical that the pancreas makes. It's known as glucagon, and glucagon pushes the sugar up, and the DPP-4 inhibitors help push it back down. Well, we know that if we look overall at these drugs, the most important thing is 
what's going to happen to the cardiovascular system. We know that there was this drug called Avandia that was popular some 20 years ago, and that drug, Avandia, was unfortunately associated with some heart disease, heart attacks. So now all of these diabetic medicines have to go and study the cardiovascular effect. And they did one on this one called the TACO study. And the TACO study, looking at about 14,000 people from about 670 sites throughout the world in 38 countries, what they found was that on average, after following these people for about three years, there was a baseline of 7.2 on the A1C. That's under pretty good control. After taking the drugs for about four months, the A1C fell a little bit more, fell by about four-tenths of a percent. By the end of the study, it fell by about three-tenths of a percent. And what they found was, good news, that the likelihood of cardiovascular disease and the likelihood of cerebrovascular disease, even though these patients had a history, well, it didn't seem to accentuate it. The patients didn't seem to do any worse than the people who were taking placebo. So it didn't help, didn't harm. On the other hand, it seems like the people who were on the placebo maybe did a little bit worse. But at least it excluded from a special label warning of problems. So because of this study, because of the TACO study, the Genuvia manufacturer did not have to say that it could cause heart failure. Well, that's good. That's good. But what we know is that most of these anti-diabetic drugs are only studied for a relatively short period of time. When they study patients, they exclude people who have kidney disease or heart-related disease. And, as a matter of fact, the, these six-month studies, relatively short, don't look at what's going to happen overall to the people when we follow them for a very long period of time. Now, we know that drugs cost a heck of a lot of money. We know that if you look at Genuvia, it costs about $16 a pill. That means per year it costs somewhere between $4,500 and $6,000. That's a significant amount. And the price has gone up over time. Yet, the drug company has estimated sales well in excess of $6 billion for 2017 and $7 billion for 2020 and has a patent on this drug that's going to last until about 2022. So what do we have to do? We have to consider taking Genuvia and some other kind of drugs as well to control your diabetes. And what causes type 2 diabetes? For the most part, it's caused by not enough exercise and too much food, too much junk food, too much eating. What could you do to reduce the cost of treating diabetes? Go out and exercise a little bit and stop eating so much. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.